All right, so we've asked most of the questions we need answered earlier, but um, um, generically, approximately, how many devices have you measured? Um, separate individual separate individual devices certainly in the in the dozens I would say and out of the dozens the big question is have you measured any successful or inconclusive um, I have measured most of them which I th thought could be over unity um, as in they were presented to me as over unity were measurement problems most of them there is one which I have detected a, a true anomaly and there is another one which I think was over unity but I wasn't able to measure it using my equipment so the vast majority were measurement errors and this is just the most common theme possible if people could just use some of this equipment and do the measurements um, correctly before they go uh, too public it would save a lot of effort <laughs> save a lot of YouTube space <laughs> it would right and you know it's not a criticism because as I say I've measured over Unity so many times I've got excited I've gone home I've spoken to people people about it and when I've brought the standard and the level on of the measurements up in the following days it was a measurement error so I've done it so this is not a criticism of people who can't make measurements because we're all learning here and there's still much more I need to learn but I've learned a few lessons along the way so I that the the one power anomaly which I have measured which is very interesting and I'm going to be doing some assessments of it over the uh, next few weeks is where I had a box of electronics doing something with resonant coils and the output from this box went to a load which in this case was a um, a, um, a heating element okay like a block of metal okay and when I measured the voltage and the current going to the uh, and I, I would add the inventor says that the device was being powered using reactive power right reactive power what do we mean Reactive power is when the voltage of the current show that they're 90 degrees out of phase on the oscilloscope, meaning, in theory, there's zero watts of power, right? This is interesting, another common thing I see. And in actual fact, the only device I saw, which I think was over Unity, but I wasn't able to measure, also say that they were using reactive power. And I think this links to scalar waves and, and things like this. So the anomaly was this. I measured voltage and current coming out of this box going to this resistive element. And I was measuring a voltage and I was measuring a current, but they were, they were 90 degrees out of phase. And I was you know, pretty accurate on the measurements, I think. Which meant there was zero watts of conventional power going to the power block, right? To the resistive block. And yet this resistive block was red hot. Okay, we had a temperature gauge on it and we took the temperature of it down to ambient room temperature and we turned it on and within about 8 seconds this block had risen to 130 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit, I don't even know what that is, that's red hot. You couldn't touch it, it was too hot, within 8 seconds. And I'm measuring zero power going to it. Using the power factor calculations, using these instruments right. that you pre-calibrated so yep. you knew they were right. Yep. The whole works. Yep. Now, um, now my current working hypothesis, subject to about three weeks of really high intensity measurements over the next few weeks, um, my current hypothesis is that it is possible that there is another type of power, whether we call it reactive power or scalar waves or radiant energy or whatever we might want to use, there is another type of power which is being delivered to this resistive block to cause the heating, which is not conventional power. And time will tell whether this is true or another measurement error. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you is, these are conventional tools for conventional power. However, with that said, is there an alternative and, and this isn't something that you even need to answer, but this is sort of a thought, is is there 
an unconventional power that these conventional tools won't measure, such as the scenario you just spoke about? I think we can only measure the negative, if you like. I think we can only measure with these. We can only measure conventional power using these. Um, so, but we can measure the absence of conventional power. And if we still see something happening, at the very least, we can measure that there is something else happening. So it's almost, if you want to talk about this in particle physics, it's almost like, hey, there's this other dark matter that we can't see that must be there to make everything else work. This could be the same thought process where there's a secondary thing going on that we can't measure, we can't see, but can do work. Precisely. And I have seen, and I don't know how true this is, I have seen that part of the problem with making measurements on this unseen power, if you like, is the fact that you're dealing with so-called scalar waves or rather than conventional sine waves, you're dealing with... with um, so transverse versus longitudinal right mm -hmm. and the and rather than the the conventional sine wave they kind of spiral okay the, the waveforms spiral into a vortex okay mm. those are and and they are the longitudinal waves which kind of come out at right angles to the conventional sine wave and the problem with that is if you're trying to probe it the energy is going around the probe right so therefore you you cannot measure that's one thing i've heard which which you know, may or may not be true, but yeah. for sure that I've seen, if this is a true type of um, alternative type of power, then I haven't seen any way of measuring that. And it would be highly beneficial to have some type of probes to measure that. These are two-dimensional probes, yeah. and we live in a three-dimensional world. Yeah. So if these longitudinal waves create a third angle that you need to also measure, mm -hmm. there could potentially be where your, your measurements won't work. Exactly. And that just makes logical sense. Not even, there's not even theory in there. That's just a logical way of looking at reality. Exactly. It's in three space. Yep. And we're measuring everything here, including what's on the oscilloscope, is yep. two space. Yep. That's something I always, th like, people claim that there are these three-dimensional oscilloscopes and well, I guess if you had three of these in all the axes, technically maybe you could generate such a device. But as far as I'm concerned, no one sells a three-dimensional <laughs> electrical measuring device. So just something to think about. It, it is, and uh, the be this is the best thing we can do with, if you like, the 2D measurements. And so far as I'm concerned, what we're trying to demonstrate as a step one is, is there an anomaly? Now this device that I've measured appears at this stage, subject to further investigation, appears to be an anomaly. And that's enough for state step one. Step two would then be, well, okay, can we actually measure this anomaly? So yeah, it's, uh, it's something which to my mind hasn't been explored in any way. And let's say we can't measure the electrical properties of the, of the anomaly, mm -hmm. but if at some point you have a battery, 12 volts, and it's generating X amount of heat in watts. With the thermal power probe, for well, example. Well, or, or, yeah, exactly. Or in this case, that coil, mm -hmm. then you could take a different set of measurements if this doesn't seem to rule out all the possibilities. If the battery should be drained in X amount of time using X amount of power, yep. the heating element is X amount of heat, X yep. amount of time, and then you could also do that to sort of uh, get a better idea of if you're looking at something wrong or if you're measuring something wrong like it's a it's a separate way of looking at the problem to confirm that oh the battery is lasting longer than it should so there's something else going on here yeah exactly there's several ways to sanity check all of these types of things and exactly. and um, measuring from a, a fixed amount of power like a battery is a very good way and, and that's exactly the method that we're using for the possible anomaly that we saw is yeah how quickly does the battery drain conventionally heating this heating element versus this particular way with with the special box and then that's another way that's another way of seeing whether this is doing something so let me ask you a question if i set up some device and i take these measurements and i really convince myself I've got something that I can't explain. Uh, what do I do? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? 
what what at that point should I do? I mean, my personal response is, well, open source it. But that doesn't really help because you can't replicate something you can't understand. And so that's kind of a challenge. But if you wanted to have a third-party verification, such as yourself, um, wh what would you do personally if you convinced yourself you had something real? Well, um, I think getting some type of verification from someone you trust is a good step. I would say contact you via your YouTube channel because through your contacts, you know, with me and with other guys, we could take a particular device and we've got a, you know, a high level of, uh, of, of trust between us and we can do this. We can actually create, uh, this is something I do all, all day, every day almost, is, is finding guys on YouTube mostly who um, appear to have something anomalous, okay? And I reach out to these guys and say, hey, okay, let's get together come to me or I'll come to you let's do a whole bunch of power measurements and see what we've got here and so there's obviously a, a level of trust involved there and sometimes people might want to do NDAs and all that's fine because what we're actually just trying to find is something that works and so step one really is to get that verification um, to check that it really does work because I have also been involved in technologies that have gone very public as over unity devices and I've consequently shown them as not over Unity devices. And then you get some big problems with credibility. So I would say before you go too public on it, get a verification from someone you trust, uh, like through Russ, um, and then do whatever you want to do with it, basically. There are channels and avenues to getting these technologies out. There really are. If you're sat there in your garage or wherever with your technology and you can't quite see how you can do anything with this, um, don't worry because there are channels that are available there's a fantastic network of people with good hearts and very professional equipment and they are there that you just need to reach out to them and so a good place to start is really making contact with Russ all right well that was a bit extensive but I think it's important for everyone to understand that measurements are important and even if you get all the measurements perfect sometimes you still have something anomalous you can't even understand with these two-dimensional tools as we've discussed. So, you know, it's just one of those things in life where if you believe it's going to work and you work really hard at, at, at doing it and you make the proper measurements, which is the key thing, and you still can't understand it, but you're heating an element more than what the battery is supposed to supply, I guess at that point you got something worth talking about, worth looking at. What you do with it is up to you. Uh, you know, I like open sourcing because it gives you this validation of there's no weight on your shoulders. So if you, pub if you publicly share it, then you don't have what I would consider a target on your back if you're that type of person that think that way. Uh, personally, I just walk around every day not really worried about it because everything I have is on the internet and shared and it doesn't bother me. So, all right, well, I'll let you guys go. Peace out. God bless. Have a good day. And thanks to my good friend. MI5, because I remember that real well. <laughs>